After building the fort, the men of Jamestown set to work. They have been sent by the Virginia Company, a commercial endeavor to tap the riches of the New World. About half the colonists are commoners, the other half, gentlemen. They are men of title and privilege who manage the colony. Historians have long thought the settlers, particularly the gentlemen, were lazy. But Kelso's team at Jamestown is changing this view. They uncover three large pits filled with objects discarded by the settlers. More than 300,000 artifacts are found. It is the largest collection of early English objects ever discovered in North America. The archaeologists find evidence that the men were industrious. Colonists built storehouses and experimented at making glass. They crafted copper jewelry to trade with the Algonquins for food. They split clapboards for shipment home to England. Some explored the rivers for a route to the Orient, while others searched the hills for minerals. Summer of 1607, after three months in the New World, the men get their first taste of hardship. The heat becomes unbearable. Mosquitoes bring disease. Some colonists drink the brackish river water and are poisoned with salt. When the men run through their supplies, they begin to die at the rate of three to four a day. Under the pressure, many turn against the colony's weak president. One of his harshest critics is a brash commoner, John Smith. He was a loudmouth and they didn't like him. He was uh, roundly disliked um, because he was the sort of man who got things done. And you do that by treading on other people's feet. In the first months at Jamestown, factions fight for control of the colony. The struggle may soon turn violent. Kelso and his team may have found evidence of this struggle. It is the grave of a young male. He is named Jamestown Rediscovery 102C, or JR for short. The skull was crushed by the compacted soil. As the archaeologists reveal JR's right leg, they see that a musket ball is lodged below the knee. Because of its delicate condition, the skeleton is removed in its slab of earth. J.R. may be America's oldest unsolved murder. He sustained a, a massive leg wound from a European firearm. The impact was so great that it actually severed his leg. Both of the lower bones are completely broken, and this part is actually turned around about 180 degrees from its normal position. So this is just hanging, the arteries would have been severed, in which case you would have uh, a quick death, a bleeding death. An x-ray reveals a five inch spread of shot. It will also help Kelso to unravel this murder mystery. He orders a ballistics test. Shots are fired with period firearms. The weapon would have to be at least eight feet away to create JR's wound. That eliminates the self-inflicted wound. So someone shot JR 102C. And that someone else would have to be another European, because they had the muskets. Kelso has a theory based on the settlers' written accounts. JR may be one of Smith's allies. Stephen Calthorpe. While on guard duty in August 1607, Calthorpe was shot.
possibly on the orders of one of Jamestown's leaders. After only four months in the New World, the English may have started to murder each other. December, 1607. John Smith is exploring the Chesapeake when he is attacked by Algonquin hunters. He will later publish his account with these drawings. Two of his men are killed, but Smith is spared when he mesmerizes his captors with his compass. He must have been a terrible bore because he lectured the Indians for about an hour on the heavens and Christianity and God knows what all. Um, but how he managed to do that in English uh, to the Indians who didn't speak English, I'm not sure sure. Smith is brought to the great chief, Powhatan, who orders his death. His head is placed on a flat stone. Warriors prepare to beat out his brains. At the last instant, Powhatan's 12-year-old daughter, Pocahontas, stops the fatal blow. But this legendary act of mercy may have only been a show. This whole thing was a charade. Powhatan wanted to demonstrate his power and wanted to show compassion. He used Pocahontas to, to step in to do that. Powhatan had shown Smith that he alone held the power of life and death. Smith has made a friend, and as a gesture of goodwill, Pocahontas will bring gifts of food for the next few months. It's in the nick of time. Death has claimed nearly two-thirds of the original settlers. Over the next year, relationships with the Indians will improve, and the commoner John Smith will be elected president of the colony. He puts gentlemen and commoner alike to work. Corn is planted, and a new well is dug. Now it seems that the first English colony will survive. <laughs>